Hello. I have set myself a challenge. This is a Korg ES1 drum machine. I'm going to make an entire track using just this drum machine. Wow, no one's ever done that before. Yes, I know. I know it's a very common thing for people to use one device to make an entire production, entire track. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing, but there is an added twist, okay? This is a sampler, okay? It's not a synthesizer. It doesn't make sounds. And the twist is I have to delete all of the samples from inside this device. And the one rule is that I'm not allowed to connect any external equipment to this sampler to generate any sounds. How do you generate sounds from a sampler with no internal samples? How do you do that? Well, that's going to be the question. Is it possible to use this sampler as a synthesizer? Well, that's going to be what we'll do today. And I figure I'd start, uh, like many, many of us do with uh, electronic music, is a kick drum. So we're going to see if we can use this sampler to generate a kick drum sound without any samples. Okay, uh, let's give it a go. Okay, so here we are. We have an initialized setup here. As you can see, if we go to the sample library, uh, there are no samples, no sound. Okay, so before we get started, we need to talk about the uh, killer feature of this machine, and that is resampling. And if you don't know what resampling is, uh, resampling is basically plug in a device, sample, uh, record a sound uh, externally. Yeah. Uh, resampling is recording an internal sound, so taking a sound that's already in the machine and recording it back into itself. But uh, you can do that, what you can do with that is you can apply effects. So let's say you have a, a good drum sound and you want to apply some compression with the compression effect, but you also want to apply a reverb. Well, you can't, you've only got one effect, so what you do is you apply a compression effect and then resample, re-record that sound, and then apply the compression first and then the reverb later. So each version of the sample that you create has a new effect applied to it. And that's what we're going to be doing a lot uh, with this setup. So resampling is what we're going to be doing, but first we need to actually have a sound to begin with to resample. And how do we do that if we have nothing in the memory? Well, there's a little trick you can do. You can do all right. First, uh, go into sample memory, go into sample mode, uh, hit audio in through, which is going to, any audio that comes in to the interval is going to pass through to the output and it can record it. Uh, and we're just going to record a few seconds of silence. All right. And that's finished recording. And you can see that it has recorded. It's playing it back, but I can hear nothing. And I'm sure you can hear nothing too, but there is something there. And I will show you if we go to shift 11, which is the normalize function, which basically, if you don't know, takes the, uh, the takes the sample, the information of the sample and pushes it to its maximum value. Uh, and in this case, when we do that, we get white noise because we've taken silence, but it's, you know, in this system, there is no perfect silence. It takes that very, very tiny bit of data, maximizing it, and it becomes uh, white noise. So good. That's a start. That's actually useful. So we're going to write that to uh, sample slot zero. And this will take some time and we'll switch, switch it off. We don't need that anymore. Uh, and go to, in the pattern mode, we can assign this into any slot we want. So in slot one, we'll assign that sample. There we go. So that's all good. We have a sound and we can start to resample. We can start to apply effects using the effects here and we can generate more sounds. So we got a, a phaser, chorus, reverb, pitch shifter, all these fantastic things, right? But we're making a kick drum, so what do we need to make this sound? Well, what we need is we need to take this um, white noise sound and squash it down so we have uh, just a very, very tiny, a tiny spike. And um, we'll use that to generate some more sounds. So we'll go into the sample mode and here we're going to edit the sample. Okay. Uh, and what we do is we're going to start the change the start point of the sample to be somewhere in the middle. By the way, if you, you can scroll through the sample like this, but if you hold down shift, you move in larger increments so you're not scrolling all day on this thing. Okay, so we'll just choose uh, 79 is the end, so we'll go somewhere in the middle, 22, it's fine. And then we'll take the end point, so we move the start point up and we're going to move the end point back to, to meet it, okay? And there we go, we have a tiny, tiny click. We'll just make that a bit bigger. We'll just uh, move the start and end point to find something. There we go. That'll do. That'll be useful for us. Okay. So we need to write that to sample slot one. So it's going to copy the new version over to sample slot one. 
but there's one thing we should do really is now we have white noise we have a few seconds of white noise on sample zero and we have a few seconds of white noise on sample one but with the start and end points cut but we've got a lot of wasted <clears throat> a lot of wasted memory there so what we need to do is we need to use uh, shift 12 which is truncate which will delete all of the data either side of the sample so we just have that sound there so if we go into the sample start time you can see now this sample begins at zero and ends at 78 so that's all the data we have in there so that saves memory we'll be doing that a lot and we also need to normalize make sure we're at maximum volume there we go and write it now we have our raw ingredients to make some sounds so you know let's get working on uh, some drum sounds so we're going to uh, pattern mode uh, we can choose the sample of slot 1 to be the click and now we can apply some effects to this click and we can get something usable. Now, um, on this machine we have a, a low pass filter on, on every slot but what we're going to use is the resonant filter over on the effects section. So we turn on the effect and we get a resonant filter which has the cutoff here and the resonance here. And as you can hear, if we max out the resonance, we get the filter to resonate on itself, and it produces more of a more of a tone, more of a uh, kind of a sine wave. And as you can hear, that starts to sound more musical and more like a drum that we could possibly use. So, I don't know about you, but that sounds quite 808 to me. So that's going to be our starting point, right? So for now, we'll resample this. We'll see how that sounds. So for resampling, we want to go to. Uh, I did this before. I did uh, pattern set record, puts you in record mode. And when you're in pattern mode, whenever you do something, it will start recording and it will resample what's going on. So if we just trigger that sound, that starts recording. We'll stop it. Go into sample mode, and these two dashes means we've recorded something, but we haven't saved it yet. So that's now been recorded. Great. So we can edit that, we can normalize it to bring it back up to uh, full volume. And actually that sounds very clean. That's really good. That's better than <laughs> it's better than it worked on my last take. I don't know why that's come out so well, but excellent. That's very usable. Okay. And there we go, we have an 808 kind of sound, which we can change the pitch of. We can change the filter. Cool. And yeah, I don't know if you can hear that. There's a slight click at the end of the sample there. Yeah, so we'll just chop that out, right? We've recorded so much silence, so we'll just make it shorter. Right, make that a bit longer. A bit longer. That'll do, and we'll add a small fade out just to square that off at the end. And then we'll truncate and normalize. And then we go, we'll write that to sample slot two. So we have an 808 drum sound from some very few steps. We started off with white noise. Uh, we stuck that down to, we chopped it down to be a very small peak and then we passed it through a resonant filter, which gave us this very resonant boom sound. Excellent. But I don't want to stop there. I want to turn this into a more kind of techno-y kind of punchy kick. So how do we do that? So normally if you're doing this with a, with a synthesizer, what you would do is you would uh, take you generate a sine wave, um, but you'd uh, you wouldn't it wouldn't stay at a constant pitch. Generally, you'd have it start at a very high pitch and very quickly drop in pitch. That's what gives you that initial punch sound of a of a typical kind of techno uh, kind of kick drum. So that's what we're going to do. Now, with a traditional synth, you would use an envelope, and we don't have any envelopes in this thing. So what can we do? Well, we can control. Uh, let's just play this sound. Yeah, we can control the pitch here. That's cool, that's, you know, and it, we can quickly kind of dive the pitch like this. Okay, that sounds like a drum. Now we can record that automation using the motion sequence here. Uh, we can record it in live, but it's better to do it uh, with the step sequencing that this thing has built in. So what we'll do uh, in the pattern mode here, we'll just add, um, in the step sequencer, we'll add one uh, to the first step. So when, when we hit play, that'll just play on the first step. Great. And now we're gonna switch on motion sequence, go to smooth. And that will allow allow us to record in the information, but we're not we're not going to record it in by hand. We're going to add it. We're going to edit the information directly. That's much more tweakable. So go to motion destination here. You can see this controls the pitch, which means we're controlling this one. Uh, we can control level, uh, filter, uh, pan. We can also do uh, effect, roll, and some other things. But for now, we just want to go to pitch. That's fine. Uh, we want to edit the pitch, 
and then the motion value now this is no longer a step sequencer we can actually edit uh, the value of each step and I'll, I'll show you what I mean so we'll go to step one we want the uh, the trigger the start of it to start off high so uh, this I think just means current value so we'll take that up to 63 so now this first step is going high pitch and then on the second step we're just going to go down back to zero so that should start off high and very quickly uh, dip down we'll see if that's worked there we go straight away that sounds like that sounds much more like a kick drum to me and if we want we can go and edit those values we want less of a dip yeah i quite like it like that we can go lower if we want very low great but i like it around zero yeah around there somewhere that should that sounds pretty good so if we like that we can just resample it so we'll stop it go to um, pattern set record oh sorry we have to come out of this mode first uh, pattern set record now we're in i uh, think this means mono by the way we're in resample mode and all we need to do is just hit play and when i hit play that'll record the sound and drop it into the sample memory so here we go cool go to sample memory we can see it's here and we've got it and now we can chop it up to make it a nice sample that we can use again and there we go that's it that's the very beginning uh, we can do more to that. We could stop there. We could carry on. So for now, I'll tell you what, just whilst we're here, uh, I'm, I'll make this into a slightly more usable thing. Just chop the end off a bit. Okay, fade that out. Then we'll truncate, normalize. I'm also going to make sure that the start of the sample uh, is directly on the transient, uh, the beginning of that sound, because when you resample, sometimes it tends to shift the sample along a bit, so it doesn't really trigger right when you want it. So we just go to the start point. Good way to check is just see it, see if the button's responsive. If there's a delay, you'll feel it. Also, you can turn the pitch down. So you can see there, right? There's a bit of a bit of a delay. So we'll just tighten that up a bit. Something like that. That's fine. So we'll truncate, normalize, write, and we'll write that to sample salt three. There we go. And now. If we were doing, if we we're making a track, we just select sample three, slot one, and we have a nice. Ah, okay, we've still got the automation here. So what we'll do, uh, I'll tell you what, for this pattern, we'll write that, we'll save that, because that could be useful later. We'll just go to the next pattern where we don't have any automation. My encode is being weird again. Come on, there we go. Go to this slot, slot three. And there we go, we have a kind of a boomy, kind of kick drum sound. And if you don't like that, if that sounds too long, we can just go into the sample memory uh, and just see, it'd be good if you had envelopes, but we don't. So we have to go into the sample memory uh, and just shorten that sample a little bit. We'll give it more of a fade out. Cool. And now we didn't truncate that. So if you want to go back and lengthen it again, we still have that data there. So. There we go. Well, that's a start, I think. So as you can see, we went from nothing to some white noise to a little uh, spike, and then pass it through a resonant filter to give it a tone, <clears throat> changing the pitch of that tone, and we've actually made something that sounds like almost like real music. So there we go, that's step one, kick drum, done. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna have more videos coming out. I'm gonna do some more experimentation, um, generating some different variations on this sound, trying to give it some more interesting texture and doing other sounds too, like snare drums, hi-hats, all sorts of things. But uh, that'll do for today. Uh, thank you very much. Um, if you like this sort of stuff, subscribe. <coughs> Excuse me. I can't even do my outro properly. But there we go. Thanks, subscribe if that's good. I've got some more stuff coming out soon. And um, thanks for checking in. Cheers.